Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me an immense pleasure in welcoming each one of you at this webinar titled Upstream Bioreactor Technology Benchtop to Manufacturing, brought to you by Bluetech Media and powered by Paul Corporation. With the growing healthcare demands, especially seen in this pandemic, there are currently more vaccine and biotherapic manufacturers than before to step up to the crucial requirement of speed, scale, and supplies. With variety of bioreactors available in the market for development and manufacture of therapeutics. The major bottleneck to commercialization is the viability of a cell culture process in addressing scale up and technology transfer. This webinar outlines the aspect of bioreactor designs, characterizations, and scale up of a single use stirred tank bioreactor and highlight the benefits that an advanced flexible control system can bring to bench scale bioreactors catering to both adherent and suspension cell culture processes. To start the webinar today, let me welcome our guest speaker, Mr. Satish Kagindali. He is a senior scientist upstream vaccines R&D, Reliance Life Sciences. To share his views on single use bioreactors and process optimization challenges. Satish is a biotechnology professional with a vast experience in bacterial, yeast, and cell culture upstream R&D scale-up, process development, and technology transfer, handling QMS, and troubleshooting related to process and equipments, preparation of URS, FAT, SAT, IO, OQ, and PQ area and utility qualifications. So over to you, Satish. Thank you, Ashish, for the uh, introduction. Uh, hello, uh, uh, good morning, welcome you all. Uh, today I'm going to present uh, a small presentation on uh, uh, bioreactors and challenges. So let me start uh, the, my presentation by sharing my screen. Okay. Uh, again, uh, good morning all. Uh, today we'll uh, discuss about bioreactors and challenges. So let's get started. Yeah, these are the contents of my uh, uh, today's topic, types of bioreactors, uh, single-use bioreactors uh, in some, uh, suspension cell culture, uh, single-use bioreactors for, uh, you know, uh, in adherent cell culture, and uh, challenges in uh, conventional bioreactors and uh, single-use bioreactors, and uh, a couple of slides on utility and time uh, management, uh, you know, that is uh, 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 at, at 2KL uh, uh, capacity. So, so bioreactors, uh, uh, these uh, SS bioreactors are you know, uh, derived from uh, uh, fermenters, uh, it's uh, uh, single bioreactors are introduced 25 years back. Single use bioreactors are now disposable uh, bags, uh, 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 which can be consists of three layers of uh, plastic foils, made up of uh, plastic foils. So uh, before uh, single use bioreactors uh, to conduct uh, clone screening uh, and media screening activities, uh, we used uh, you know microplates and uh, uh, shake flasks and all. We used to select like uh, three or four clones and uh, uh, and carry it out into uh, uh, glass bench uh, bioreactors, and, and this this resulted in you know low yield due to you know. Uh, a lack of mimicking of this uh, shake flask uh, microplates uh, uh, to that to uh, bioreactors because we don't control uh, so many parameters in uh, you know uh, microplates uh, and uh, shake flask. So due to which uh, we ended up uh, in uh, low yield clones. So now with uh, uh, single use bioreactors, we can uh, uh, run 96 experiments 
or even more uh, than that simultaneously and you know and results can be analyzed uh, using uh, DOI tools you know we can uh, analyze the uh, uh, results also within weeks so uh, previously the uh, average titers used to be 1 to 1.5 uh, gram per liter uh, this is uh, regards to monoclonal antibodies now with the help of this you know uh, new technology uh, which is a uh, single use uh, virus we can uh, uh, say that the average has moved from 1.1 1. 1 to 1. 1.5 gram per liter to uh, it's almost double now it's 3 gram per liter so this is a main advantage uh, of using a, a single virus so coming to uh, types of bioreactors so as you all know the ss uh, state tank bioreactors uh, are having a, 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 a application uh, wide application in such suspension cell culture as well as you know adherent cell culture uh, scale ranging from 20 to uh, uh, 20 liter to 20 kl suspension cell culture application uh, we can uh, use it to uh, you know as well as uh, uh, for adherent also by using uh, micro carriers so beads can be added into the uh, you know steel tank and uh, we can use it for you know, adherent cell culture process Again, uh, steel, ta steel tank uh, uh, single-use bioreactors. These mimic, uh, you know, SS bioreactors. So almost mimic the SS bioreactors. Again, these are pre-layered plastic bags ranging from 50 uh, liter to uh, 2 kL uh, for cell, uh, suspension cell culture. And uh, these have, you know, uh, different shapes and sizes like uh, cylindrical as well as cubical shapes. Cylindrical usually consumes a lot of space in terms of height. Uh, and that again, uh, cubical uh, you can uh, uh, reduce the space, you know, in terms of height. You know, height uh, by uh, uh, HYD ratio uh, it will be uh, one is to one in terms of uh, cubical shape bioreactors. Uh, next is wave induced single use bioreactors. They are usually a 2D and 3D bags. Uh, Usually these are used for you know, seed development activities. Uh, these range from one liter to uh, 200 liter uh, scale. Usually uh, seed developmental activities, uh, these can be used. Next coming to dynamic bed, the uh, single use bioreactor. These are used for you know, adherent cell culture activity. Uh, usually uh, these will be in uh, disc shaped microcarriers, uh, usually. Uh, that is not the convulsion and uh, these are usually made up of polyester microfibers and these provides larger surface area when compared to you know, microcarriers as in case of you know uh, uh, steel tank uh, recess bioreactors where we use uh, uh, beads uh, to carry out and cell culture uh, uh, dynamic bed uh, uh, reactors will offer a much more surface area compared to microcarrier technology moving to next uh, slides uh, uh, these are the, some of the uh, uh, single use bioreactors uh, available in the market for suspension cell culture. First, uh, we have PAL, Allegro XRS25 uh, bags are available. Uh, this is a unique uh, you know, uh, technology, uh, a, a biaxial agitation system, which uh, you know, shorter the mixing duration. Uh, 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 from uh, 50 to 90 seconds uh, in, in case of conventional system it is it will reduce it to 16 seconds and these ranges uh, from 2 liter to 25 liter scale and again in PAR we have uh, uh, Allegro uh, uh, SPR bioreactors which range from 50 liter to 2 kL. In uh, Merck we have uh, Mobius series uh, bioreactors which are usually uh, uh, disposable vessels uh, starting from 3 liter to 2 kL. Again, in Ependaf, we have BioBlue, uh, which is uh, 380 liter to uh, 50 liter scale. Uh, these are also uh, you know, uh, plastic vessels. Inside Tiva, we have uh, Wave 25, which is, is uh, used for seed generation activity. Uh, uh, which is uh, up to 25 liter scale we have uh, available in the market. Again in Saitiva uh, for higher scale we have XDR series uh, ranging from 10 liter to uh, 2 kL. So these are the 
some of, uh, of the uh, suspension cell culture uh, single by single use by reactors available in the market. Coming to uh, uh, furthermore, like uh, uh, Sartor, yes, we have Amber Fish uh, single use by reactors. Amber 15 and Amber 250 series are available. So these uh, are widely used in the uh, application of you know uh, uh, clone screening and initial media screening applications. So multiple uh, you know parallel active parallelly we can run multiple batches uh, using these uh, Amber uh, uh, series bioreactors. Uh, uh, Sartorius also offers. Uh, 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 biostat uh, um, uh, bags uh, range from uh, 50 liter to 2 gel and also Sartorius offers uh, biostat RM these are the bag type uh, 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 reactors for uh, uh, wave wire reactors uh, for a uh, you know uh, application from from two liter to uh, two hundred liter. Again, we have a Biostat RM ex system, uh, which is a unique, uh, you know, fed batch and perfusion system for that. And uh, lastly, we have a universal SU, which is a uh, uh, again uh, single use. Uh, Tanks uh, uh, made up of plastic, which range from uh, 0.6 liter to 2 liters. So, in thermo, we have again uh, high performer rocker bioreactors. Again, these are the bags uh, for seed development activity, uh, up to 50 liter working volume uh, available in the market. Again, in uh, Mid range uh, for uh, pilot scale, we have high, high performance single use by reactors from 50 to 12, you know, 2 kV. Uh, Thermo also offers uh, high performance dyno drive single use by reactors, uh, which is uh, quite uh, uh, different uh, from 50 liters to 5 kV uh, bags are available. So, next. Uh, so these are some of the uh, single use barracks available for adherent cell culture uh, process. Uh, so from PAL, Isilis, uh, uh, single use uh, fixed bed reactor nano is available, which offers up to four meter square area. Uh, in mid level uh, for pilot scale, we have Isilis 500 plus system. Uh, this offers up to 500 meter square area. Again, in the last scale, GMP model is also available in PAL. There is expansion multi plate bioreactor system which offers up to 1224 uh, meter square area, which is uh, a huge uh, area. Uh, next uh, uh, segment is uh, Omni, um, Omni BRX, uh, which offers 0.5 liters to you know, 200 liters uh, vessels, in which uh, we can get 1 meter square to 1500 meter square area for you know, adherent cell activity. So these are the uh, some of the uh, uh, bioreactors available for suspension as well as adherent. So some of the reactors I might have missed. Uh, so coming to challenges, uh, challenges related to single use bioreactors as well as uh, you know conventional uh, bioreactors. So which involves cost, safety, time, quality. So these aspects are the challenges uh, which we face in. Uh, uh, single use bioreactors as well as you know conventional uh, bioreactor system. So advantages of uh, single use bioreactors over uh, you know SS bioreactors. So single use bioreactors eliminates you no know, you know, cleaning uh, validation process as the cleaning is minimal. So uh, we can uh, uh, reduce these activities like uh, selection of disinfectants and uh, CIP chemicals. Preparation of protocols, approvals, execution of multiple cycles of uh, you know CIP and this in the disinfection process. So this is a huge task and which uh, consumes a lot of 
uh, uh, manpower as well as consumables as well as you know utilities so we need to send the samples for you know cap and uh, you know post cap we need to send the samples and we need to wait for the results so these can be avoided in you know single use barracks whereas there is a very minimal cleaning activity required uh next one is the short term uh, downtime and uh, turnaround time like so when it comes to subs uh, subs offer you know downtime during a uh, uh, post harvest activities which is usually uh, a decontamination decontamination activity which is very uh, minimal and uh, turnaround time is the preparation activity for the next batch which involves cap uh, no pressure or test ESAP, you know, full vessel uh, SAP and uh, thermosec installation, all these activities, uh, you know, uh, which uh, require a lot of time and uh, man manpower and, you know, uh, utilities and cost involved, these can be minimized. And uh, subs offers, you know, low risk of cross contamination with, uh, you know, every batch you are going to use, uh, you know, a new uh, batch, so which uh, eliminates the uh, risk of you know cross contamination again uh, as we uh, uh, have a lesser uh, cleaning requirement it, uh, so we also have an advantage over you know minimal number of autoclaves and uh, dhs you know loading load pattern qualification as well as you know validation documents qualification and requalification process again uh, when it comes to capital cost and operating cost uh, more than 25% uh, uh, savings on startup capital can be saved using uh, single use barriers. And uh, when it comes to utility and space, <clears throat> uh, the cost goes down up to 50% and uh, reduced manpower cost uh, you know, considerably. Um, and also, uh, the, the installation is very uh, handy and very easy. <clears throat> As we uh, 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 we are eliminating the you know SAP and CAP process, so it also uh, eliminates the design of you know uh, boilers, uh, 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 water purification systems, and uh, uh, steam lines. All these design activities also can be minimized. Uh, it also reduces the carbon footprint by seventy percent. You can see the uh, uh, example here. Uh, Powell expansion to 100 bar reactor, which is uh, hardly 80 centimeter height, which is equivalent to you know 20 multi tray vessels. You know, uh, this is a huge amount of plastics which can be uh, saved, uh, that in turn reduces the carbon footprint. Again, uh, now we are coming to uh, another segment: uh, challenges with the single use bar. So uh, in single use barracks, scalability is an issue. Like uh, mass transfer uh, is a challenge with uh, you know higher scales. Uh, this will be, this topic will be handled by Mr. Pankaj. Then uh, larger uh, scale barracks uh, handling is a challenge because of the uh, area it occupies and uh, handling uh, uh, you know without puncture and all those things. As during the installation, it also need to be, uh, you know, uh, gas need, uh, air need to be passed inside the, uh, you know, barracks to flatter it, and you need to check the uh, integrity, uh, you know, uh, all the ports, all these things we need to check. So this is uh, a little hectic, and uh, it consumes a lot of, a uh, uh, lot amount of time and man. Uh, these are, you know, single use barracks are expensive. Uh, now, due to uh, a pandemic uh, situation, supply chain has, you know, in a bad situation, the price are almost uh, double. Uh, performance is not completely proven. Uh, this doesn't mean that uh, you know, single use barracks are not uh, well at uh, uh, performance. When it compared to you know, conventional uh, SS barracks, uh, Single use barracks is a new technology. Uh, though it is introduced 20 year, 25 years back, so we have a limited data on uh, you know uh, single use barracks when compared to uh, conventional barracks, which are there from decades. So again, uh, one more uh, uh, challenge is most of the you know large scale uh, facilities are already designed for you know with uh, SS uh, tanks and uh, requirements for cleaning and all. 
So it is uh, difficult to invest further on a single invariant system. So uh, coming to one more challenge with the uh, uh, single yield barrier is leachable and extractable. So manufacturers will use stabilizers like you know this phosphate uh, for you know uh, stabilizing the three layer uh, barriers. So this under stress conditions like you know high temperature, irradiation conditions, uh, 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 it will lead to the you know chemical conversion of this phosphate into this phosphate, which is uh, found to be detrimental uh, for you know uh, cells cell growth. Again, uh, single use bioreactors are potential pun uh, for puncture. Uh, when you go for a higher scale, uh, you know, uh, one KL to two KL, you know, yeah, as you scale it up to five KL. So handling uh, these bioreactors and installation without puncture is a uh, difficult task. And uh, uh, these things are, uh, you know, difficult to move when they are filled with media or, uh, you know, culture. So they need some ISS tank support to move in from one place to another. Again, uh, these are sensitive for uh, you know, temperature and pressure. <clears throat> temperature range, range is given you know, uh, for the most of the bioreactors as 40 degrees Celsius. When you can consider the worst case, worst, uh, case scenario and uh, yeah, if the temperature is uh, uh, high uh, during the transportation and all. So this leads to uh, you know, uh, uh, chemical changes and that leads to you know, uh, uh, formation of this phosphate kind of things and uh, disposable cost also uh, is high uh, in uh, single use barriers as the size of these are you know large so uh, next segment is i am uh, giving an example uh, with the time and utility so this is the mimic of you uh, know two kl bioreactors uh, uh, run at the production scale so this is the exact uh, uh, you know duration we have captured in the slide. So this involves revival pre seed one, pre seed two, seed one, seed two, and uh, seed director, and followed by uh, production fermentation at two k. So these involves uh, like uh, first three stages involve forty eight to seventy two hours, which is common in conventional as well as uh, uh, single use directors. When it comes to uh, uh, Single use bioreactors at uh, uh, seed one and seed two level, we can uh, uh, reduce the time uh, almost by uh, 12 to 16 hours uh, each for each run. So you can say uh, for every month you can run uh, maybe two batches because I'm considering here uh, 300 hours batch. So 300 hours batch. So when it uh, when uh, compared in comparison with conventional bioreactors, it almost uh, 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 need um, another uh, two two and a half day. So annually, if you consider, almost one month will be uh, wasted in this uh, process. So next segment is utility. As you can see, the uh, the process remains same. Uh, for uh, single use barriers, we have some common uh, uh, gases requirement. When it comes to uh, uh, conventional process, we require chiller, steam, you uh, know, chill water, steam, PW, WFI, alkaline acid. So these again uh, generators for these also require, you know, uh, so the lines to carry these steams and uh, you know chill water and WFI. So these are all required uh, uh, when it comes to conventional process. These can be minimized in you know, single use bioreactors. So last side summary. Of course, uh, uh, single use bioreactors are econ economical and uh, time saving. So micro uh, bioreactors or mini bioreactors will be helpful uh, during the initial stage like uh, clone screening and uh, uh, media uh, optimization, initial media optimization to obtain a uh, higher better value. Hybrid mechanism can also be adopted wherein uh, you, if you already have an uh, SS uh, uh, conventional bioreactor system, you can use it for uh, production scale and for seed generation, you can uh, uh, now use these uh, single use bioreactors. And also, uh, 
a single use bioreactors can be uh, you know recycled you know uh, uh, and also it will uh, you know reduce the you know, uh, carbon footprint by 70% so that's it uh, thank you uh, i'd like to thank uh, uh, blue tech media and uh, pal for arranging this uh, uh, magnificent uh, uh, presentation and I'll, I'll also thank my uh, boss uh, dr rajan uh, sri raman and uh, dr mohan uh, for their support thank you thank you satish for such a thoughtful presentation before we proceed further i would like to inform all our participants that will open the floor for a question and answers at the end of the session you just need to click the q and a button at the center of the screen below write your question by clicking ask a question mention the name of the speaker and write your question below we will take this up with the respective speakers also you will find feedback button so please take a minute and give your valuable feedback before you leave now it's time for a poll question uh, on your right hand side when you click q and a button you will get a poll button as well kindly click the poll question and you will find our first poll the question is what is the cell type you are working on options are option 1 adherent cell culture option 2 suspension cell culture we will allow 30 seconds for you so that you can answer the poll question Thank you very much. You can still keep the window open for the poll questions and we'll come back to our next poll in some time. Now for our next session, I would like to welcome Dr. Ratnesh Jain, Head and Course Coordinator, Bioprocess Technology, ICT, Mumbai. He will be sharing his views on the topic, Digital Twin Next Generation Bioreactor Control Technology. Dr. Ratnesh Jain is a recipient of BIRSC Innovator Award, Humboldt Fellowship, and Ramalinga Swami Fellowship. Dr. Jain has demonstrated industry academia collaboration and have completed more than 50 sponsored industry projects in the last 10 years. He is also founder of We Translate and co founder of Away Bioscience, a 3D printing startup jointly founded by IITM and ICT alumni. Dr. Jain is also leading skill development and training program and organizes one of the largest biopharmaceutical hands-on training program called Biosimilar Workshop. So over to you, Mr. Dr. Jain. Thank you, Ashish. Uh, thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, I also, uh, Thank Blue Tech Media and uh, Paul Corporation uh, for arranging this particular webinar. Um, in few minutes, I'll be sharing my screen and we'll be talking on this particular subject, which is very much essential uh, in the coming days, which we call Biopharma 4 or in a simple understanding, we call Industry 4. So Biopharma 4 or Industry 4, uh, where Digital Twin is a very important part, is a next generation bioreactor control technology. Before I begin, I'll quickly introduce my institute, ICT Mumbai, which is set up in 1933. Uh, this particular institute is located in Matunga, Mumbai, and run one of the very important chemical engineering and very prestigious chemical engineering program along with masters in pharmaceutical sciences as well as biotechnology or which we call bioprocess technology program which is currently i'm having um, also this has unparalleled impact to indian society which has generated multiple chemical entrepreneurs 
Uh, so we host various alumni from ICT who gives a lot of motivation for us to work on bioprocessing area, starting from the Lions or Dr. Reddy's or Lupin and Mariko. Coming back to our research group, our research group is basically divided into two parts. Uh, one is called Pharmaceutical Biotechnology Lab, another is called Biological Characterization Lab, led by myself. Looking into uh, manufacturing biopharmaceuticals, so this is a primary process, and my previous speaker have us already briefed you how bioprocess, how bioreactor works. So this is an interesting concept, and for a very long time, we are working on biomanufacturing. So whether you are manufacturing an enzyme, whether you are manufacturing a recombinant protein, or whether you are manufacturing vaccines, largely bioreactors play an important role. So post clone selection, post uh, media preparation, and post you understand that uh, process can be scaled up from a laboratory scale to bioreactor, which is industrial scale. So a 50 liter bioreactor is typically what you need uh, for a phase one clinical trial. A 500 liters bioreactor scale, typically when you 500 to 5,000, depend on the size of the clinical trial, you need again for phase two or phase three clinical trial. And you go to a much higher industrial scale bioreactor when you are looking into manufacturing and continuous supply into the market for patients post-approval. So these are certain bioreactor levels once you are actually manufacturing a relevant bio biological compound. It is also important to understand that when you are looking into uh, bioreactor processes, um, these are which we uh, called um, uh, by upstream bioprocessing. So these upstream bioprocessing, I'm using my laser pointer to understand. So this area where we are looking in upstream bioprocessing, these are extremely relevant to actually successfully launch your final uh, material from a bioreactor. So once you understand that what kind of bioreactor I'm going to work on, what kind of upstream parameters I've decided, and if this understanding develops, largely you could actually reach to a very large level of bioreactor uh, and go to a fill finish downstream level very effectively. Now, how do you do that? So this entire biomanufacturing area is largely operated based on experience. Currently, wherever uh, the industry is operational, they are working on experience and trial and errors. And this is largely because of the bioprocess complexity you are actually handling a living system but there is a growing interest and industry four is coming on the digital twins digital twin models which can integrate the physical and virtual system again by a real-time data monitoring so uh, you enable interactive communication uh, again for advanced biomanufacturing and more operational efficiency digital twins though it may be a alien name to some of you but this has been operational for a very, very long time. Those who are in astronauts, those who are working in airline industry, they are using simulators uh, before they are actually learning uh, aeroplane, you know, how to basically become a pilot or how to become an astronaut. You have to have into in simulator. So these are a very simple concept, which is there in the industry for a very long time. However, these concepts are very new to bioprocesses. Again, the primary limitation is complexity. And where is this complexity? Because of these factors which you are seeing on the slide. It means you have multiple process definitions which are typically needed in a bioreactor, a pH control, oxygen control, temperature control, pressure control. Amongst other controls, you have to always look into osmolality. You have to also have a cellular environment where cell growth, nutrients, product, and product quality are going to impact your bioreactor performance. Within the bioreactor, you have multiple components within the media like glucose, glutamine, which are also going to impact the performance of the protein production together with process parameters, which are temperature, ag agitation, oxygen, or carbon dioxide. And which is also, the bioreactor is also going to run into batch, fed batch, and continuous operation. It means there are 
so many parameters which are actually needs to be understood while running a bioreactor and that becomes one of the major challenge for developing certain computational models so then digital twins comes uh, with a lot of hope to make these system so as i told you previously these are virtual construct of physical system that mirror the behavior and dynamics of physical system a complete digital twin must have a physical component it means you need a bioreactor actually uh, a bioreactor and a virtual bioreactor so there is a automated data communication virtual bioreactor you can simply create one in computer which will actually be correlated with your running bioreactor and you can get the data transfer partial digital twins are also which are actually being used where you collect the data feed the data into computer and try to create so this is happening for multiple years but a real time digital twin is still not a reality which definitely companies who are developing bioreactor is a good motivation for them to go forward in this direction now what are the existing computational approach to give you a closeness doe so whenever i told you multiple data like critical quality attributes critical key process parameters so whether kpp cpp or cqa those who are uh, biopharmaceutical professional they understand these terminologies very well design of experiment and multivariate data analysis or mvda are again hands on approaches to minimize error to have right scale up options people are utilizing design of experiment and multivariate data analysis for a while doe is a very uh, is a historically empirically established strategy but eventually mechanistic approach to understand mechanism which are more computational in nature and hybrid model mechanistic and computational both is also in right now there are a lot of people which are going to i mean which are uh, used in industry cfd or computational fluid dynamics whenever flow pattern has to be decided whenever you are developing a reactor and assuming a mixing dynamics and you know how uh, typically a fluid is mixed uh, along with its component and maybe if you are also designing how uh, cell culture in a shear environment or even uh, other environment is how it is behaving together with bioreactor with impeller and other bioreactor uh, mechanics you are actually deciding these things much before you actually do a experiment using cfd cfd is again a age old phenomena which is using all these phenomena are not predictive in nature so a digital twin actually complement these methodologies for predictive behavior so when you feed data you are actually getting a more predictive behavior you need much better control over your bio process before one can approach uh, for you know scaling option from laboratory 1 liter scale to 20000 liter scale maybe one can go directly to 20000 scale if you have a real control over the data so digital system as i told you physical system which is a primary first need what data needs to be captured here so here if you look into cpp kpps which are your process parameters your cq uh, cqa quality attribute quality attributes of the uh, design here you are running a cho culture to hear the the address which i am taking is for monoclonal antibody production you are having multiple data cell specifically temperature do medium they are actually controlling so all these parameters are controlling your quality attributes which will define your product quality product yield which also called specific productivity aggregation of the protein cell growth parameter still we have yet to reach a real time data calculation so we have online analysis in line analysis in situ analysis and these analysis are growing over the period of time so we have reached to pat and sensors to a very where you could actually monitor do you could actually monitor temperature and ph in real time but when it will comes to quality attributes quality attributes only few quality attributes can be monitored in line you need to capture data so some of those some of the data which can be captured in a bioreactor uh, are actually very forward in terms of uh, you know developing a model or a digital twin for that bioreactor for that particular situation 
So cell culture data or real time data a monitoring of bioreactor for multiple set which I have explained and also the data which is continuously coming how to process and how to manage it is a large amount of data. So suppose you are running a parallel bioreactor or you are running multiple bioreactors in sequence or you are running different bioreactors for 13, 14 days culture, you are getting huge amount of data. So you should have a system how to manage and current processing, uh, digital processing has this uh, kind of challenge. But this challenge can be overcome by mechanistic and statistical model, which are already available, which are already being practiced for the cell culture as well as bioprocess development. So the virtual system, which is multi-scale mechanistic or data-driven, uh, the kinetic model. So what are you are looking into? You are looking into different kind of approaches, which, which are cellular or reactor, either cellular approaches. So there are many genome scale model, uh, which are there uh, already established. And there are a couple of companies who are developing these model. You also, there are a lot of other PTM, which are called post-translational modification. You have a kinetic model, which is based on entirely bioprocessing parameters. So this is already a multi-scale mechanistic model. These are small compartment. Since bioprocess is very complex, what we've done is compartment. So compartment modeling is developed in 1960s. Now the same compartment modeling you can actually apply in terms of developing bioprocess. You also have a data-driven statistical model where you have multivariate uh, data which is coming into statistical model and through machine learning or neural network, and this is this is giving much more success in current uh, you know model development so these model which are coming uh, and developing a digital twin are based on prior knowledge historical data or real time collected data from the physical system um, now you are looking into a whole picture how does this whole thing look like so you have a bioreactor since your cells are growing which are going into different phases glucose level or amino acid level is also varied over the period of time when there is a growth in the cell production in the phase uh, and the virtual system will also mimic the same situation as i am saying the physical system has to have a virtual system so whether the virtual data the way virtual data is going whether you are getting same amino acid profile so uh, our group is continuously working on the same segment specifically real time monitoring of amino acid when we are running bioreactor in real time monitoring of these amino acids we are also developing certain model in glycosylation and specifically on charge variant charge variant analysis um, at, along with amino acid uh, during these particular simulations where we are feeding data from the real time bioprocess to digital models and whether the digital model are predicting that particular behavior and whether other processes which are going to be follow-up processes can be developed much more effectively. In the data collection, uh, that is one of the major challenge in upstream bioprocesses are there. So whether you have a small scale reactor or a bench or a pilot scale, you need these inline sensors. We, we also call them a lot of other sensors called soft sensors. Raman spectroscopy, which has, uh, you know, in recent time have proven its uh, worth in a real time understanding of multiple data. So what do you get? Uh, you get a reactor data like pH. You already have a lot of pH sensor, cellular data like viable cell density, total cell density, glycan, metabolites, nutrients, amino acid. So these data is continuously coming when you are doing inline monitoring. And once your data processing is there, the Raman experiment for this, this particular we have taken Raman, it goes to again an existing multivariate data analysis module, which give a PLS model deployment, and ultimately you get a process value. So once you run multiple bioprocess, you get a huge amount of data. As you see in other industries, big data analysis, data processing, data is oil, many other terminologies. Similarly, data is also becoming an important part of upstream. The primary challenge here is that industries those who are actually working day in and day out on multiple bio processes there is no control on that data which is coming out from so it is in uh, largely going to be academically driven or driven by the startups or new companies who are different data driven model and they are developing their bio processes but the 
the success part will remain there when more and more bioprocesses data is uploaded on the system. So data processing can be much more smoother and finer. So I'd like to conclude here that physical and virtual bioreactors are interactively connected and uh, they can be connected by a management system of collected culture uh, by inline monitoring. So in addition to bioreactor development, there are enough opportunities and future scope there where you could um, actually monitor the data which is coming out from the bioreactor. Uh, in virtual system, multiple development has happened on multi-scale mechanistic model or data-driven model. Data-driven is a future because it's easy compatibility with artificial intelligence and machine learning and also they are combined to mathematically or statistically relevant input coordination so like kpp and cpp we all know what parameters are going to be input we also know what are we needing as a output kpi or cqa so since we are aware about input parameter and output responses these model can simply facilitate the conversion Fully integrated and again automated bioprocess digital twins, where they can actually measure by soft sensors. Uh, these certain sensors actually are right now working on multiple. So, a couple of industries are working for real time culture profiling, where they can also predict, and that is the true success of virtual or true success of. Uh, digital twins that they can understand metabolic changes, cell growth, and also the recombinant product synthesis. So the future which uh, a digital twin will uh, be going into, uh, of course, AIML, which is also making a lot of sense in other industries. And the bioreactor companies uh, should or must look into AIML integration in their bioreactor. Uh, bioreactor simulator, which is also a couple of companies developing, but you need a more robust or harmonized simulator, you know, relevant of the brands and complexities. Also advanced control strategies uh, where sensors are integrated, almost all possible sensors one can make, specifically the chemical sensors. So pH and DO sensors are already there, but chemical sensors, a lot of development needs to be done. Digital biomanufacturing, through digital route, one can actually manufacture things on, you know, on computer and can this be scaled up for much faster. And that is the one of the way uh, to actually get affordability in biomanufacturing and impact the patient. So uh, I wish to thank Archit and Marian, who in my team is working on digital twin model along with some of our collaborators. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. And if you would like to learn about our work, please join on Biosimilo workshop. Thank you very much. Uh, over to you, Ashish. Okay, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Ratnesh, for such a thoughtful presentation, uh, which I'm sure has been filled with valuable insights for all the participants attending this webinar today. And we are already getting a lot of questions, which we'll take up in some time. Okay. And uh, before we move further, uh, we'll take up our next poll question. Uh, request all our participants to kindly click the poll button. You will find the poll button after you click the Q&A button at the center of your screen. The second poll question is, what would be your current process scale? Option one, lab scale, that is one to 10 liters. Option two, process development scale, that is less than 100 liters. Option three, production scale, that is more than 100 liters. We will allow 30 seconds for you to answer this poll. Thank you. And for our next session, I would like to invite Mr. Pankaj Salvi, Senior Bioreactor Specialist, Paul Corporation, and he will share his thoughts on the topic, Stirred Tank Bioreactor, Benchtop to Manufacturing. Pankaj Salvi is a Senior Bioreactor Application Scientist and a member of the Cell Culture Technologies team at Paul Biotech. He has been dedicated to training bioreactor customers and providing scientific consultancy 
and advise on the transfer of their processes into Paul Biorector Technologies and process optimization. Pankaj holds a master degree in microbiology from University of Pune and has over 13 years of experience, including positions at the Lupin Limited and Paul. Previously, Pankaj has worked for Lupin Limited as an associate scientist process development and in a techno commercial role in Paul. Knowledgeable and skilled in upstream and downstream process development, bioletics and CGMP with experience in upstream and process development research on microbial and mammalian expression platforms. So over to you, Pankaj. Thank you, Ashish, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So I'll be talking about benchtop to manufacturing. So essentially, like when a company plans to scale up from R&D to manufacturing, the major challenge that they face would be like, how do they achieve their upstream scale up? And then again, like what are the scale, what is the strategy to attain that scale up? So I'll be trying to like to capture some inputs into how a company can achieve scale up and how can Paul assist you in doing that. So talking about the agenda. So the value proposition, I would be touching upon that some portfolio, sorry, firm portfolio overview some engineering and characterization aspects, scale up strategy, and a few case studies on that. Yeah, so the value proposition. So the Allegro STR bioreactor family is a single use bioreactor, which is basically compact, which is essentially useful when uh, in terms of usability, it's ergonomic, ergonomic that the users like can easily handle it. It's intuitive, so that makes it easy for the user to reduce the risk of any mistakes. And then again, a turnkey solution, like it is a complete solution for you. And again, like process assurance and performance would be critical, uh, basic uh, requirement for a bioreactor. Talking about like cell lines, which can be processed in Allegro STR. So there is a proof of like being used of SF9 to like NSO cells, even Cho cells and like every cell line, basically a mammalian cell line can be grown in the system, which can be like suspension adapted and sometimes like microcarrier based adherent cultures. So on the portfolio overview, uh, this is basically on based on customer feedback. Also, I'll be starting with the video and I'll be talking through that. So the 2000 liter bioreactor is basically a three feet bioreactor. So the three meters, sorry. So the three meter can easily fit into any facility. So you can see the packaging over here. It is very compact and it is easy for two personnel to install it. And then again, there are like interlocks which would guide you and there are color coded tubing labels. This is the intuitive screen. And it is an automated inflation. So essentially there is no operator intervention during inflation. And then there is automated deflation, which would reduce your disposal volume. And then again, like when you're going to pick it up, it is just like two personal required because of the excellent packaging. And then talking about the performance, like there is excellent KLA greater than 30 KLA. And then cell growth and viability, which I would be touching upon in my case studies. Yeah. So talking about the three differentiators, like how does Paul Viretta stand? So usability wise, like the installation is pretty easy. Only two operators need to inst uh, are required for the installation and complete operations and like a reduced footprint uh, process assurance wise. Like it is like 100% integrity tested. So and uh, validate like the bio, bio container is 100% integrity tested that gives you the assurance uh, over the failures of the SUS. Again, like validated software is in there. And talking about performance, like we have a large pitch blade impeller, which basically give, delivers a high power input and that will help you to get a good KLA that I would be touching upon in the case studies. Talking about the portfolio, like Paul has invested a lot in the Allegro STRs and you can see like in 2014, Paul started with a 2200 liter bioreactor. And then now by 2020, we have the complete range starting from like 50 to 2000 and Talking about the engineering and character characterization performance aspects. 
So this is the feedback from the customers, what the voice of the customer, and this is not what Paul says. So in terms of ergonomics, ergonomics, it is very compactly packed, so which helps you in handling. So handling is very easy and like two personnel can handle it. Installation wise, the installation feature is like the open face structure of the bioreactor being a cubicle helps you to install it easily. You can just front load the bio container. Installation wise, it will just take 10 minutes to install it. And then talking about automated inflation, it takes like 30 minutes against a cylindrical bioreactor, which, which can take about 90 minutes for a 2000 liters. The tubings are color coded and numerical. So the coding helps you to install like install it. It is very intuitive. Talking about the footprint, the 2000 liter bioreactor is just like three meters, which because of which you don't need a ladder, only a steps tool can work. Talking about manpower, manpower like two personnel can handle the entire setup and automated deflation, which makes reduces your disposal volume. So that basically gives you an assurance that there, there would be reduced errors in the manufacturing. Talking about process assurance differentiators. So like the differentiation factor is the packaging. The packaging is very compact and neatly planned, which makes it much easy to handle. And then it reduces the chances of any damage to the SUS. There's a bottom entry impeller, which has a short staff, a shaft, which essentially would reduce the stress on the bearings. And that would like reduce your chances of any leakages. The tubing management is smartly done, which like during inflation, you can easily like without any operator intervention, the tubing would align properly. Uh, handles, there are bioreactor handles for like loading the bio container. And then there are rip cords which avoid any sharp edges. Talking about the sensors, the process control. So there are like single use as well as conventional sensor options for the pH and DO. And then again, like uh, based on the process requirement, the DCO2 sensors or any other pad tool can be incorporated into the sensor the system. Talking about like engineering performance and mixing efficiency. So based on like when it was in the R&D development, so based on the CFD model, a pitch blade impeller was possible because of a direct drive impeller. And this essentially has given the all the flexibility of having a big impeller that is like half the diameter of the wire reactor, which helps to drive a better power input. And this with this, you can actually get a KLA more than 30 per hour which essentially gives you like the confidence that you can work in a big process range for the power input and get your process scaled up and essentially a good KLA. Topping, talking about the engineering performance uh, in terms of mixing time, which becomes very critical in terms of a bioreactor. So this study was done with a media simulant. So the media simulant was used and the mixing time was evaluated with a peer, like a addition of a alkali based on the pH to achieve like 95% of your fixed set point, stable set point. So essentially you can see over here that the graph shows that each of the system is basically scalable and it's similar in performance. And then with like, like high power input, you can even achieve a mixing time of less than 30 seconds and even like less than 15 seconds. Talk like KLA, like oxygen transfer and KLA. Though these are the important criteria when someone is evaluating a bioreactor and when you're going to achieve, you're trying to achieve good performance in a bioreactor. So talking about KLA, like you can see, like with a thousand liter bioreactor, we can attach the range of KLA in this range of 40 per hour. And essentially like every bioreactor can achieve around 30 KLA. And again, like if you see this graph, the predicted KLA versus measured KLA, so the predicted KLA is basically based on the Van Tiret equation, where which is basically dependent on the power input per volume and the superficial gas velocity. So in this case, you can see that the predicted and the measured KLA are similar. So basically this indicates that if you're going to scale it up, scale up a process based on only the power input and the superficial gas velocity, you can easily achieve your uh, targeted performance without actually doing a KLA study also. So Paul can help you with that factor. And yeah, talking about like CO2 evacuation, like essentially when someone is scaling it up like to a uh, thousand liter scale or a 2000 liter scale, one critical factor comes into picture is the CO2 accumulation in the system, like in the media. So the dissolved CO2, if it increases, it is going to be toxic to the cells. And considering this, the essential thing that we need to check, check is like the stripping out of the CO2. 
So for this, the study you can see, like with the Paul Allegro STR, which has a macro sparger, like with even like higher, we can give in higher sparging of air, and this essentially helps you to achieve good CO2 stripping. Like it is like in the range of more than one mole per liter per day, and like this was evaluated against an in-house perfusion process where you get like 146 million cells, and again with a fed batch process with 23 million cells. Yeah, and talking about like computational fluid dynamic modeling. So this study was essentially done for a comparison between the cubicle bioreactor and the cylindrical bioreactor. So this with this graph, you can essentially see like with the Kolmogorov length between the two bioreactors is basically similar. And again, like uh, the power input per, per volume is similar between the two bioreactors. And this image basically shows that there is essentially no difference between a cubical allegro STR and a standard the cylindrical bioreactor. And yeah, like how can we help you with the scale up? So scale up basically like uh, with literature, you can understand that scale up is basically a function of your mixing and the mass transfer. If you can achieve these two factors, you can essentially scale a process well. So these being the nonlinear scale up parameters. So basically it has been seen that if you can match the power input per volume and the superficial gas velocity, you can have good mixing and mass transfer. And it is irrespective of any bioreactor size. It can be a benchtop bioreactor or a 2000 liter bioreactor. So essentially what Paul does is like we would be with the extensive study available, we can help you with the achieving a constant P by V and superficial gas velocity. And with a good PID control, you can have good environmental control and gassing in the system. So this is an example, like uh, usually like how do we go around with scale up? So over here you can see like this scale up, it was done from a 1.5 liter traditional, 1.4 liter traditional bioreactor and against a 2000 liter Allegro STR, 200 liter. And you can see over here, like essentially the power input of like 70 was achieved but if you keep a constant PYE, you can achieve that same in the Allegro STR. Whereas if you consider a tip speed, in that case, like you would have a lower KLA over here only, if you can see over here, it's just two against nine, having a constant power input and a superficial gas velocity would essentially help you to scale the right, scale the process in the right way. And then again, like if you consider VVM as a scale up parameter, then you would be adding excess gas into the system which is not required and that would reduce your performance. Talking about scale up strategy, how we can help you with that. So some uh, bioreactor application specialist, trained bioreactor application specialist can help you with that scale up. So we would be assisting you with the scale up. So for that, we would essentially require some inputs from your end. That is the current reactor specifications. How, what are the impeller specification and sparge specifications, which can be obtained from the vendor or the bench scale bioreactor vendor or essentially from data sheets. And then based on that, we can help you achieve that scale up. Now, yeah, I'll be touching upon a case study. So this case study is basically on AV production in a stable transfected cell line. And this basically is public literature. So this is based, uh, this is from CEVIC. And over here you can see like an immortalized human aminocyte cell line was selected and it was a stably transfected cell line producing AAVs. So basically the process which, which Paul got was in a 10 liter stirred tank bioreactor, bench stop reactor. And then the criteria was like, we need to scale it up to a 50 liters and a 200 liters. So the strategy employed over here was essentially getting a fixed power input per volume and then maintaining the superficial gas velocity in there. So this is the scale up tool that we employ in which we would need some inputs from the customer that is basically getting the geometry of the system, getting the ag inputs on the agitator, basically the power number and how it is operated in upflow or downflow. And again, like how are this, how is the sparger? Is it a micro sparger? Is it a macro sparger? So essentially, even if the benchtop bioreactor is a micro sparger, we can scale it up in an Allegro STR in a macro sparger way. And with these inputs and then additional inputs like uh, inputs with the pr present process with the agitation speed and the sparge flow, we can achieve that uh, power, constant power input over here 
water as you can see and the superficial gas velocity which essentially would reflect in your kla uh, and the like the scale up study further on like if you have those inputs we can even evaluate further parameters like kolmogorov length the tip speed the average shear rate and then mixing time this would be critical in sense uh, in sense like if the customer is very cautious about like uh, with very sensitive cell lines where the shear can be pretty high uh, shear can create a damage to the cell uh talking about performance so this is the study where essentially this line indicates the purple line indicates the allegro uh, the bio blue bi reactor 10 liter scale and the other lines indicate the allegro str 50 and the allegro str 200 and over here you can see like if not like you get comparative growth uh, uh, achieved in this bi reactor and viability and essentially i would say better uh, viability and growth and then same compared to uh, in, in terms of uh, titers we've got comparable titers in both the systems in the bench stop bi reactor as well as the uh, scaled up bi reactor in the allegro str another case study touching upon like a comparison between the cubical traditional cylindrical bi reactor and the cubical bi reactor allegro str so we are essentially we have seen like maintaining the same power input basically we can achieve us a scale up or i would say essentially like the same condition between a cylindrical bi reactor and uh, allegro str cubical bi reactor so in this case all the parameters like li linear parameters work maintain the same and the power input basically was maintained the same with the differences in the agitation so this was a cell line cho sl line with uh, in which the product was the igg1 and we have this pub as a published literature which can be available to the customer i'm talking about the performance so essentially the like similar or even better performance was obtained in the allegro str against a cylindrical 200 liter bi reactor over here this indicates the allegro str whereas this indicates the cylindrical bi reactor and again in terms of titers also better titers or semi comparative titers were achieved in the allegro str against a cylindrical bi reactor uh, talking about the case study Uh, another case study this is about like sf9 and this is again the published literature this was like published by brahma and brahma this was a study of sm sf9 cells which were co infected with baculovirus 2 baculovirus vectors to produce an av or gf vector and this essentially indicates like the data is available uh, to be shared like it is a published literature so that can be shared and you can see the titers obtained in a pol str bi reactor against a cylindrical 200 liter bi reactor and essentially they are comp comparable talking about the support services what we can provide so we have application scientist which would be there to train the customer and even support you with consultation and process any process support with troubleshooting as well there is service available from our side like uh, whenever is required there are trained service personnel available validation services are available for single use when it comes to like ex extractable leachables and other aspects of single use and then process development services are also available from pol and it being a global service network you can all assure you that we can provide you the most efficient support and yeah talking about the c train so we have an xrs bi reactor which can support you with the, this is a rocking motion bi reactor which can support you with your c train requirements so i'll just run you through the video this is be essentially a bi axial rocking motion so instead of a single axis it is like a bi axial mixing which gives you better mass transfer and better mixing in the system so essentially you can obtain a better kla than a traditional single axis rotator uh, rocking motion bi reactor and yes like uh, support wise pol can support you end to end so they can provide you end to end solutions not only the bi reactor but with your downstream solutions right from clarification to your fill finish operations 
Thank you. Thank you for that insightful session, Bankaj. <clears throat> and uh, now it's time for our final poll question. Request you all to kindly click the poll button. And the next question is, are you interested to get a technical support from Paul for your upstream process? Option one, yes, please contact me. And option two, no, we can do it later. So we'll spend another 30 seconds to make sure that we answer this question. Okay, now I would like to open the floor for the participants to ask questions they would like our speakers to share their views or perspectives based on the experience and expertise. You can also join the stage and ask questions to our speakers one on one. You just have to click join stage button and just write your name and you can log in. In the meantime, let me get all our speakers on the floor. Welcome everyone, and thank you all for wonderful presentations. Uh, as you see that we have a lot of questions already, and we'll go one by one. So the first question goes for Mr. Satish. How do you maintain temperature for SBUs? How can we cycle, recycle the SBU when it is categorized in the biohazard waste? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are already uh, you know, uh, well-established uh, you know, uh, heating pads are available for uh, heating uh, 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 single directors. There is no issue. And as far as recycling is concerned, so you can uh, initially decontaminate the uh, single director, then you can recycle it. Now you can validate that process. I think this answers your question. Okay. Uh, there is one more question uh, for Mr. Pankaj. Which engineering parameter should be critical during process scale up from cylindrical geometry to cubical geometry? Yeah, so hi. So I guess I already answered that in my presentation. So that wouldn't differ actually because a cubical and a cylindrical essentially are the same because if you've seen like a cylindrical would always have baffles. So if you see internally a cylindrical bioreactor, it would be similar to a cubicle, cubic, cubicle being a natural baffling system. And additionally, like the parameters don't vary when you're going to scale it up, it would be essentially the same. Like you can consider KLA as a primary factor, the mixing time, and then KLA would be like a predictive model would be your superficial gas velocity and your power input per volume. Okay. And apart you. from that, there could be some other parameters which we need to work on. Like, yeah. Thank you. Um, our next question is for uh, Dr. Jen. We are working on a metabolite using recombinant E. coli. Our question is for large scale bacterial culture. If we want to change the defined media in between the experiment, for example, supplement of substrates, can we able to install a micro filter? Yeah, so thank you for this question. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, with respect to large scale, uh, I mean, large scale culture, whenever one is conducting, it is not advised to change media. Uh, you know, when you reach to the media stage, when uh, large scale culture is going on, it assumes that the media conditions are being optimized. Uh, so it is not advised that one is actually reaching to, I mean, one is changing that stage. As long as uh, filtration uh, systems is concerned, I'll uh, probably uh, pass this question to Pankaj. Uh, probably he could answer that question in a more, uh, you know, much better way. So Pankaj or Satish, both of them can probably answer whether a microfilter attachment may be a nice idea or not. Yeah, any of you who can pick? Yeah. 
so essentially what i understand is like uh, it was like hollow fibers or something that has been asked over here so i've seen that it has been used a lot like hollow fiber based atf systems or you can uh, consider hollow fiber systems like aps have been used in mammalian cell cultures but bacterially essentially it has like there is less application in that sense except for like used for like uh, the final processing steps where they need to remove the ib separate the ibs so I, essentially i wouldn't say like there is this is not a common practice to change the media in microbial processes because again like microbial processes are very dynamic and it is like there is a rapid change so changing a media would be like difficult and again bacterial bacteria would tend to cl clog the filters the hollow fibers or something so it would require a lot of optimization but that would again not be economical considering like e coli would be a process where you would consider economics in that process I think yeah, that's it for me. Okay. Anything from your side, Satish? Satish, you are on mute. I believe uh, there's some issue with his network. Okay. Now we have few people uh, who have joined the stage, and I'll take uh, Mr. Siddharaju to ask a question here. Uh, Sidraju, can you please uh, unmute yourself and you can ask a question? Uh, uh, you have Ashish, joined I have a question for uh, and I'll take, Pankaj. Uh, Mr. Sidraju. Yeah, uh, with respect to, to KLA question, calculations. Yeah. Uh, Pankaj. Uh, Sidraju, can you please uh, unmute yourself and you can ask a question? Uh, yeah, I have unmuted. Uh, I have joined I have a question for Sidraju, uh, you put yourself your uh, front end on uh, mute. Uh, uh, Sidraju, can you please uh, unmute yourself and you can ask a question? Okay, let me inform everyone who is joining on the backstage. They are also logged in at the front end. So there will be an echo. So if you are joining backstage, please switch or maybe you can mute your front end. So there is no echo. Uh, Sidharaju, can I... No worries, Sidharaju. Can you do you want to join again? You can just mute yourself on the front end. Can I take you on stage? Can you ask the question, Sidharaju? You can unmute yourself. And um, uh, he has uh, he's written that you know he'll uh, ask he after the call maybe. Uh, okay, I think it's all messed up here. Like maybe. Don't yeah, worry. in case like if someone wants to connect with us later, we can do that also. We can answer the questions in a separately. Yeah. Sure. No worries. Uh, we have a uh, lot more questions coming up here. Uh, max scale of SUB in the market today and challenges encountered during implementation. Uh, this is a common question. I think anyone can pick this up. So I will I will comment on it probably like single use bioreactors considering stirred tank bioreactors. The max scale I would say like which is there in the market now is like I would say like six thousand liters, like less proven but yeah there is six thousand liter scale which I have seen. There is four scales, five scale and six scale from different vendors. And the challenges I would say like as you increase the scale, like the chances of leakages in, in like would increase essentially. So because of the hydrostatic pressure building in and then getting the right, like the leakages would be a primary concern, I would say in that case. And again, like uh, it depends on the technology, uh, like vendor to vendor, it would be like meeting the heating requirements, your gassing requirements may also be a, uh, a challenge in that sense, in a single use. Yeah. So I think uh, Pankaj has rightly said that, you know, 4 to 6 KL scale, but 4 KL scale is something which is very well proven in terms of uh, single use bioreactors. Um, in most of the, so it doesn't matter what kind of vendor system you are choosing in, but 4 KL scale is very well proven and uh, that has demonstrated a success. Uh, as rightly pointed out again by him, that if you go on a higher scale, there are companies, um, major uh, contract research organizations, specifically uh, in, um, you know, out of India, like Samsung, uh, which have tried certain other skills as well on a higher scale. Uh, but largely India or in Indian perspectives, uh, 4KL is a very well accepted scale. And also current, you know, considering the need, uh, you know, rarely one has to go beyond that scale as well, uh, unless, you know, the COVID vaccination kind of a situation comes in. Uh, but 
uh, you know for routine uh, antibody manufacturing or routine enzyme manufacturing as well uh, one can definitely manage uh, at 4k l scale and that is you know also economical uh, much more essential Thank you. Uh, before we move ahead, uh, yeah, one more question for Satish. We are just running out of time. We'll just take one one question each now. Uh, microcarrier suspension based cytodex or fixed bed PAL isolis. Which platform is better for adherent cell culture? Uh, Satish, this is question is for you. Uh, Sadish, can you uh, hear us? I believe he has some issue with the network. Uh, Pankaj or Ratnesh, uh, can you uh, pick up the question here? So yes. essentially, like, yeah, sir, you would you like yeah, to Yeah, no, Pankaj, please go on. Yeah. I'll add on. I'll add. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So go. essentially, like talking about like a fixed bed bioreactor, like something like ISLS or a microcarrier, I wouldn't say like the uh, you, it, anything is better. like. It is, depends on your culture conditions also, like how is your cell line and all that. So because microcarriers would be in a stir tank bioreactor, whereas a fixed bed bioreactor, like essentially, like a, a, this would be an adherent system, which is fixed. And then the flow would be isolated, like uh, the stirring would be isolated. So being two different systems, again, it needs to be evaluated for your system individually. And talking about like uh, stir tank bioreactors, what I have seen is like achieving a scale up beyond 500 liters is sometimes a challenge. Especially when you're talking about like gene therapy applications, where getting the transfection is, becomes a little complicated at uh, like higher scales. Whereas in adherent system, like you have like around 500 meter square, like for isolus, where it doesn't become a challenge at least achieving the transfection. So yeah, again, but it depends on your basically cell line and what process you're running. And I would say like it essentially needs to be evaluated in both cases. Uh, Dr. Jen, do you want to add something? Um, yes, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Yes. So uh, I think I'll just, uh, you know, in agreement, uh, there is no priority. But uh, one of the major thing one has to take between ICLS or uh, microcarrier based culture is when you are looking for density, if your aim is to achieve highest possible density, ICLS has certain proven advantages you could achieve through uh, micro carriers as well um, and uh, micro carrier has provided a good amount of productivity as well as achieving a cell density uh, since you know because of the nanofibrous technology because of the you know inherent advantage of the technology icls has given certain advantage so if if your objective is to achieve higher cell density uh, then of course you could probably prefer that though again there is no preference over so what is your objective that makes uh, you know then you can choose but if you are just exploring you can begin in both the cases it doesn't matter what kind of technology you are choosing thank you um, the next question is for uh, Pankaj all bioreactors is cubicle then doesn't it differ in mass transfer and performance from a traditional cylindrical bioreactor yeah, so like again, I guess that this is a similar question to the prior question. So yeah, be, though it is a cubicle thing, like basically like what was the reason for a bioreactor being cylindrical was like earlier vessels were all SS and SS uh, systems need to be like sterilized. They were like uh, SIP. So SIP basically are pressure vessels. So because of that primary reason, a vessel being uh, SIP, it needed to be a pressure vessel, which is basically a cylindrical thing. But when we th think about single use, Single use that because of the irradiation, you don't essentially need to SIP it. So that like eliminates the reason for keeping it a cylindrical. Because even in a cylindrical bioreactor, if you see, like you're not going to have a complete cylindrical inner surface. You are going to have baffles in there. You need to restrict that ma like mass movement of liquid. So that essentially a cubical bioreactor would uh, be a natural baffling system, which would get you will, will enable you to achieve the same thing. So essentially, I wouldn't say like when it depends on the need, but Again, like there is not much of a difference, and that has been like even with my data, if you can see, they are like performing in similar ways. In fact, okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'll take one last question. Okay, we have a question from the. Just give me a second. I'll ping the question. Okay, how do you how do we do risk assessment during bioreactors? 
uh, sorry, bioreactions, and how do we develop control strategies as a part of QBD? Satish, would like to take this up? Are you, are you able to hear us? Hi, hello. Can you repeat yes, the question? Can yeah, how do we do risk assessment during bioreactions? And how do we develop control strategies as a part of QBD? There are various tools available uh, uh, as far as uh, risk assessment is concerned. So you can do the risk. There is no difference between the risk assessment as far as uh, conventional or you know uh, single directed uh, risk assessment remains the same. So you can use the same tools uh, 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 conventionally what we are using. So same way you can perform risk assessment. As far as QBD is concerned, same thing. Uh, you can perform the risk assessment on the uh, that aspect also. Doesn't differentiate between conventional as well as you know single use. It remains same. It's maybe a uh, 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 number of items which you cover uh, may be uh, reduced, but uh, the uh, tools remain same. You can use the same old tools for risk assessment as well as QBD. I think that answers your question. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. I believe we have already run out of our time. So we will stop here. I would uh, like to thank uh, all the audience uh, for being a, such a wonderful audience here. And I would also like to thank and take this opportunity, our esteemed speakers, for taking out time from their busy schedule to be a part of this exclusive webinar, which surely has been engaging and enriching for all our participants. Uh, I would request all our participants to click the feedback button and take a time to give your valuable feedback. This will help us to serve you better. You will find this uh, feedback button on your screen. Uh, just click the Q&A and you will see the pop-up of feedback button. Just take a minute and uh, you will be able to give your feedback. Also, don't forget whoever has not filled the poll questions, it's still active. Click the poll button. Submit your answers before you leave. So once again, thank you for being such a wonderful audience. With that, we conclude this webinar on upstream bioreactor technology, benchtop to manufacturing, brought to you by Bluetech Media and powered by Paul Corporation. But having said that, this is not the end. We will be coming up with our next session that will be talking about the Adherent Cell Culture webinar this month itself on 28th of April. So stay tuned and we will connect again. Thank you very much. Stay safe.